community care, like the core, just kind of the, the basics of what you do? Yes, we divided our services in the pharmacy as two tracks. Mm -hmm. So we have a division that does community clinical, and this is where the pharmacists themselves can bill directly, can uh, do these services themselves. Mm -hmm. And then we have the collaborative track, and this is more like the ambulatory care by collaboration. And this is where the pharmacist does the work, Mm -hmm. and the prescribers bill for the work so, under so the, mtms for us is mm -hmm. more of the core of every pharmacist should do it so the community i just want to kind of make it very clear so the community care um, group of services includes mtm anything the pharmacist can bill yeah um, pharmacists are MTM, doing great consults um, immunizations travel health immunization mm -hmm. consults um, you know, you can do insulin pump training from um, manufacturers. You can do pharmacogenomic consults, and, uh, yeah. diabetes self-management uh, training or education. So there's enough that pharmacists can do. There's biohormone replacement consults. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, there's, um, there's a lot that pharmacists can do beyond dispensing on their own. Uh, with different point of care testing for screenings and yeah that's what we call community and in community we have the core advanced and expert uh, just because you may need some uh, background information or a certification to do more but that technically every pharmacist should be able to do it right so that's the so that's one one group of services and then mm -hmm. the collaborative care is when you partner with a physician and yes. um, now, it, can you explain that piece as far as certifications? Do you need any kind of what? What is? What are the requirements? If there are any requirements, really, to 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 jump into this, or can anybody really do it? And what? Any what are the, so, what are the main concerns people usually have? I mean, what or kind of the biggest myth? concern is getting the collaborator, or the, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, if, the, if the providers have not seen you in that sense, mm -hmm. where your recommendations make sense and uh, you had built that relationships of beyond dispensing, because mm -hmm. a lot of them are clueless about the education we've gone through, especially the older providers. Maybe newer providers are used to having pharmacists on their team. Uh, they are used to team-based care, but a lot of the older providers uh, as one provider told me, they were trained in a triangle. They are on top of the food chain and everyone else is in the bottom. Mm -hmm. So who are you, you mm -hmm. know, to send recommendations to me? Right. So that's why when I said before, things that I was doing in building relationships brought me closer to them that they saw me in that realm. So a pharmacist who wants to enter that world of collaboration, there's a lot of opportunity but you can now look at what are the things that are easy to get in. So I would say chronic care management, pharmacists are, we're always doing chronic care management. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, it's an extender of an MTM because an MTM is a point in time, right? We right. get to do one CMR a year and that's all we get to do. But what happens after that MTM? Who follows the patient? Yeah, pharmacists can follow the patients, but who pays us? No one. Mm -hmm. So CCM to us was an extender of an MTM because right now if you do an MTM and a patient tells you all their goals and everything that they would like to do, it would be nice to follow them next month and the month after. So to me, chronic care management, every pharmacist can do it and pharmacists bring a lot of value in chronic care management because medication related issues are huge.